Let's get it. Mike Semper Vivi here with you for the next hour talking about professional wrestling, which is something we do every single day here on the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. Tune in, iHeart, American Forces Radio, sportsbyline.com, over the air affiliates like KMAV, 99 KMSR, and the mightier 1090. Podcast replays on Sirius XM, or maybe your video streaming on Twitch or YouTube. However, you're joining me today, I'd just like to say thank you. Hopefully, wherever you are, it's sunny outside. If not, hopefully, it's sunny inside your mind. Snowing here on my portion of Delmarva, the very rare snow. We're getting like an inch of it. It should pretty much paralyze the area. That's how little snow we get. We don't want to see any of it at all. If we wanted snow, we wouldn't have moved to the beach. I wonder what beach Kazuchika Okada is going to move to. Very cloudy day if you're a New Japan professional wrestling fan. New Japan pro wrestling fan, that is, and don't have much interest in anything else outside of that. You're losing Kazuchika Okada, at least as a full-time roster member. For those of you who've been hiding under a rock or something like that, New Japan issued a statement this morning saying, or late last night, I should say, early in the morning Japanese time, saying we apologize to fans for the abrupt nature of this announcement, but join them in wishing Okada the very best in his future. As the new beginning series this weekend, Okada will appear on February dates on February 11th in Osaka and February 23rd and 24th in Sapporo. And then changes, uh, talked about changes, Changes to upcoming shows. Following that up, Okada, they issued a statement with Okada as Filthy Tom Waller chokes out here and coughs in the background. I have nothing but gratitude for having been a part of New Japan Pro Wrestling since 2007 and for New Japan bringing me from a 19-year-old kid off the plane in Mexico to the rainmaker I am today. Thank you to the best of companies in New Japan, to the best of opponents that I've been able to face here, and to the best of fans that have cheered and booed over the years. I promise to make it rain in every match I have left. So keep watching. This obviously is the biggest story of the day, and we are going to get into as much of it as we possibly can. Myself and Filthy Tom Lawler, as well as WWE SmackDown tonight, live on Fox, and a whole lot more. We'll be back, Wrestling Observer Live. Welcome back to the show. Mike Semper VV and Filthy Tom Lawler here with you. You know, we do this show right here for an hour at a time, but if you want us 24 7, you can find me on. Twitter slash X at Semper Vivi. I do have accounts on Hive and Blue Sky and Threads and Instagram. And you can follow me there. I just don't use any of them. Brian's here on Twitter at Brian Alvarez. Filthy is at Filthy Tom Lawler. The timeline for this show is at WONF4W. And the broadcaster is at Sports Byline USA. I'd also like for you to make the wrestling news part of your day. Everything you need to know to get your day started, get you up to date, or get you to your favorite wrestling review pod, like Dave and Brian on Wrestling Observer Radio. Each episode of the wrestling news is between 5 and 15 minutes long every day, 365 days a year. No quick bait, no speculation, no rumors, just the wrestling news. Find it wherever you get your podcasts, or head on over to thewrestlingnews.com and at Wrestling News AV on Facebook and Twitter. Filthy, I, I was going to go on a little rant here, and I was going to ask you to, to 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 give me a little bit of time here so I can talk a little bit about Kazuchika Okada here. But the way you are you are chomping at the bit to come on, and by chomping at the bit, I mean coughing. Are you okay right now, sir? <laughs> I may have, I may have picked something up from you, Mike. I was going to say, do you need any of the cough medicine with whoa, codeine over whoa, here? Whoa, whoa, whoa! I'm not sure. I'm not sure I should be drinking that on air. Hey, the floor is yours if you want to talk about Kazuchika Okada. Well, I just, the... I, I just want to bring up a little bit here, and then we, we got the entire show to get into, and obviously I definitely want your perspective, you know, on this, but, you know, to kind of set this up for everybody, you know, the departure of Kazuchika Okada from New Japan is something that's been coming seemingly for quite some time now, but it's still shocking now that we're actually here. There has never been a wrestler to leave the country of Japan while still on top and announce that they're becoming a full-time member of the North American promotions roster, you know, whether it be WWE, WCW, or now AEW. Okada's 36. Shinsuke Nakamura was about 36 or 37 years old in 2016 when he came over and signed with WWE. And he was a big, big star still, but Nakamura had slipped behind 
Okada and Tanahashi and Naito and Omega and other people. And he basically, when he left, said that there is really nothing more that, that I can give New Japan. And he was actually right about that. I, I believe that he was right about that. This version of Okada that we have right now is still number one, not only in New Japan, but for the entirety of Japanese professional wrestling. And unlike Nakamura, I believe that Okada still had a lot more to give to New Japan. The problem is, whatever it was that Okada had to give to New Japan, they either couldn't or wouldn't know what to do with it. And they have proved that all throughout 2023. And that may not be everyone's opinion, but it's mine. And I know I'm not the only one with it. And there have been rumblings and discussions of discontent in New Japan for quite some time when it came to certain talents, and whether that be native or foreign, and that's for a variety of reasons. It's not just one thing. And it's been going on all year. And it's been going on longer than that for some. And other than stardom's rash of injuries, the biggest story in the second half of the year in Japan has been Okada's contract status. And in December, the news surfaced that Okada had taken on Barry Bloom as his agent. And to me, that was the key sign that he was leaving. At the absolute least, and this is at the least, it was a warning shot by way of a bazooka to New Japan that he had one foot out the door. And that shot came on the heels of Will Ospreay deciding to join AEW full-time. It came amongst the midst and during the midst of the rumors that Julia would also be exploring her North American options, and that still seems to be the case. And then last week, it was reported that Okada had filed a U.S. patent and trademark claim on the word Rainmaker, just to kind of, you know, basically give some more that he was going to be leaving. So when you combine all of those things with the departures in the last 18 months of not only Osprey, but Katsuyori Shibata and Jay White and Juice Robinson and Carl Anderson and Kyle Fletcher and Mark Davis and almost losing the Tongans, and now still possibly, possibly losing the Tongans again. And the fact that New Japan had a real shaky 23 when it came to establishing feuds and angles. And they haven't exactly, you know, had a great spark to, to begin 2024. I know New Japan fans are feeling some kind of way right now. And immediately after Observer Live, I'm going to be joining my friend Adam Summers and recording a brand new Adam and Mike Big Audio Nightmare, which is available for members of WrestlingObserver.com, that's going to touch much deeper on Okada's departure and issues that are taking place within New Japan Pro Wrestling. But that was, you know, enough rant right there. And, you know, I don't want to get too deep into the weeds on some of the issues that New Japan has had and some of the reasons that he could be leaving because... There's still a lot that we can touch on, not the least of which is, uh, where's he going? Now that we know that he's out of, of Japan, where is he going to be going? And at some point, Tom is going to be coming back, and I'm going to pose that question to him. But AEW, Tony Khan has already tweeted that 2024 was going to be a good year, put up a a reference to The Wire, which I don't I don't know if that was necessarily the best reference to put up. But I'll say this, if AEW does sign Okada, I mean, this is the perfect opportunity if you wanted to use something from the wire to have the whistle going in the background and uh, Okada's coming and and you do something you know, along those lines, <laughs> you know, if, if, and it seems to be that AEW is the front runner right now when it comes to getting Okada's services. Again, not only Tony Khan's tweet, Dave has wrote about it in the newsletter as well. Does that mean anything right now? Not really, because we know WWE is going to be making a heavy play for them. We've seen them with their new deal in Japan, which we've seen uh, Keiji Muto at every opportunity hype up WWE, hype up Nakamura, and there have been references or believed references that Nakamura has made to Okada now here for several months. So, Tom, now that you're back here, you know, uh, really the, the biggest questions when it comes to most of the people listening right now, one of the biggest questions is, 
where do you think Okada is going to go? And I mean, obviously, give give some of your thoughts and opinions on, on Okada. And you know, what I mean, considering that only one of us has shared the ring with him, yeah. you know, you know, you probably have a better perspective than I do on some of this. No, Mike, there's not much more that I can say that hasn't already been said about the guy. One of the top talents of all time when it comes to professional wrestling. And I think he's just stealing a play out of his former Chaos Stablemate members playbook, Shinsuke Nakamura, as you mentioned, and moving on to a different role, I guess you could say, as a professional wrestler and not one that's going to carry a company in Japan. Uh, I think it's one of these situations where it's now or never for Okada if he's going to come to the U.S., and the time is now. Do you have a thought either way? And and look, it doesn't matter. I mean, we're just all speculating here anyway, kind of flipping a coin. Obviously, both AEW and WWE both provide you know, great opportunities and options to him as a human being, as a employee, as a professional wrestler, you know, obviously quite distinct things in some cases. If you just had a gun held to your head right now and were forced to make a decision, where do you think he'll end up? Do you think we see him in Greensboro alongside Will Ospreay and Sting? Or do you think we may see him show up at the WrestleMania? I think he's going to NXT. I think he's a big, he's a big fan of CW Frog, and he's waiting for that deal to kick in. I think you he's know, going. To, I think he's going to WWE. I didn't think he was going anywhere, to be honest. After really? President Hiroshi Tanahashi stepped forward, I thought that that was an effort to keep him. It appears that either was too little or too late. Well, I tell you what, that is a, another very important piece of this puzzle when we talk about Okada and we talk about New Japan in 2024, and we shall do those things when we get back from break. Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Mike Semper, Vivi, Filthy Tom Lawler here with you. It's Filthy Friday on Wrestling Observer Live. Kazuchika Okada exiting New Japan Pro Wrestling as a full-time talent. We'll be joining somebody in North America. Will it be AEW? Will it be WWE? Will it be TNA Impact? I doubt it will be TNA Impact. It's uh, And if you look online, Tony Khan yesterday uh, certainly indicating uh, that uh, he's excited for 2024, Tom. I'm kind of with you. I got to be honest. I think he will end up in WWE. And I think that there are, again, it's one of those things you, there are, if you're Okada, what a great, man, what a great position to be in right now. You have a guy in Tony Khan that if you wanted to go there would probably look a lot more at your personal happiness and your family's happiness and, and treat you in, in a certain way. And there's certain things that he can offer to you that TKO either couldn't or wouldn't, but then obviously being the TKO is the juggernaut that it is. And the fact that it's associated with another even bigger juggernaut in Endeavor, you know, there's so many things that they could offer you as well, too. I think when it gets right down to it, I think he probably does join up with WWE, but we'll, we'll have to see how things go. You mentioned Ma Tanahashi. Oh, God. Yeah, it's been uh, oftentimes mentioned, too, that Okada's not even the breadwinner in his family. Right, it's his wife yeah. who is a big time voice actress, and I don't know the inner workings of how show business goes down, especially when we're talking about international contracts and voice work. But what bigger company is there than somewhere like Disney? Which, you know, you think a lot of wrestlers that work for WWE live in Orlando. You know, perhaps that opens up different business avenues for not only him, but you know, the other members of his family, his wife. So, I, man, I mean, I didn't expect think, to get that news yesterday, but I mean, think about it, the size of Endeavor and what they do for artists and things like that. I mean, it's just it's again, it's fascinating and I'm very happy for them. It's hard not to be happy for them that where that can Okada fish the most? 
<laughs> Certainly, really, that's the question we need to ask ourselves. Well, hey, it was like Shinsuke Nakamura surfing, right? And he has been quite content in what's he what he's been doing there. So, if it's if it's about the fishing situation for Okada, I would say make sure that you're joining up with. Uh, with, with AEW, and, and you got your spot there in Florida and everything. Maybe maybe can give you a Tony can hook you up with your own fishing show as well, too, your own Bassmaster show or something like that. But President Tanahashi, Hiroshi Tanahashi, was named to the position of president of New Japan in December. We talked about it on this show. We talked about it on the Adam and Mike Big Audio Nightmare about why he was being put into that position. Uh, was somebody, or we, again, we'll get into that a lot more on the Adam and Mike Big Audio Nightmare coming up for subscribers later, some of the minutia on that, but there is no putting this at the feet of Tanahashi, and they may have put him in that position to maybe try to hope that Okada would stick around, but I got to be honest, Tom, it felt like by the time this decision was made to put Tanahashi there, uh, the die has already been cast, and it felt like a move that was really more for 2024, knowing that you were going to lose Okada, knowing that Osprey was out the door, and knowing that Julia may be out of out the way from the other side of the company. It felt like the position was being filled by Tanahashi to try to stabilize things for both fans and the locker room for 2024. Okay. How do you Retro feel about that? Well, retroactively, you're right. Now it looks like a decision that was made reactively rather than one that was done proactively. If you look at the lay of the land, right? Okada is leaving. It seems as if there's a number of other people who are kind of in that same boat. And now, much like it was, what, 15 years ago or so, Tanahashi has to come in and save the day. Well, yeah. is, this not, is this a symbolic move? In a lot of ways, if it you remember be. back, New Japan was in the doldrums trying to fight back from what a lot of people viewed as dark days, the dark yeah. days of Enochism. Hey, I wouldn't call them the dark days. I myself loved seeing mixed martial artists at the top of the card, but some of the fans hated it. And it was really Tanahashi and the Tanahashi style and presentation of professional wrestling that brought New Japan back and got it a lot of, you know, play in the Western world and kind of built it up worldwide to where it is now. And now after COVID has so deeply wrecked New Japan, is it once again up to Hiroshi Tanahashi to save this company? It's certainly he's there to stabilize it now, isn't he? You know, and is he going to be Okada on February 11th and send him packing when they face off one on one? He, he, hey, I got a better question for you. Does Okada take the fall coming up in January 24th when it comes time to drop those never open weight six man titles? Does he does he finally take an L there and does he take the L to, to Kosei Fujita? Because, again, this is a conversation that's going to be better suited on the big audio nightmare, but. They wasted his 2023 as far as him being able to put somebody over or give enough rub to one of these new young lions that they have. They didn't do that, you know, let alone the, the ballad of Kaito Kiyomiya, which is <laughs> it a subject wasn't, for... It wasn't uh, going to be Kiyomiya, come on. Uh, but, I mean, again, a subject for a different day here, but it's like, you know, do, does he slip on the banana peel and, and take a loss to Fujita? I would figure that he obviously, that he absolutely loses to Tanahashi because at the end of the day, too, Okada, like, well leads their series of matches that they have with each other. And really, too, it is a poetic way to end things with him and Tanahashi considering that, when Okada came back in 2012, they had had one match before 2012, and that was when Tanahashi beat Okada and then sent him packing, and he ended up in TNA and then went to CMLL and did his excursion there. He comes back in 2012. He has the match with Yoshihashi at the Tokyo Dome, his big return, which was not 
stellar. It was it was not fluffy ducks and bunnies. And it was like, well, okay, what is going to be like for this guy? In the very next month in Osaka, he beats Hiroshi Tanahashi, wins the IWGP Championship. So them actually closing this story in Osaka in February against each other does make a lot of sense there. But, I mean, when it comes to the six-man titles, you think, does a Shii take that loss, or do, does can you actually have Okada slip on a banana peel here? I don't know. If I if I take that pinfall <laughs> to Shane Haste, I'm leaving the country, too. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Not Mikey Nichols? <laughs> no, he's a respectable gentleman. That's a yes. So, and yeah, again, it, so it look Tanahashi. I think Tanahashi is there basically because, and you heard him speak uh, about what he was going to be doing for New Japan. A lot of it is about promotion. A lot of it is about making fans happy. A lot of it is about helping that experience, drawing them back into arenas, and trying to build up that side of things. I think that's what he is most going to be doing. But it's hard for me to believe with the amount of talent that has left there, the amount of talent that still could leave there, and the fact that things are, again, very shaky right now things are not like they were back in the dark days as we were seeing the the rise of the tanahashis and nakamuras and shibatas and yoshis and and other people at that time who were were trying to crack through and break out of that dark period of enokiism but i would figure 2024 is still Watch going it. to be quite quite a rickety year i really do think 2024 might be a really rough year for new japan in a lot of ways because Again, you will have to rely a lot on your Naitos and folks like that, but you have a ton of young guys that you need to establish and try to figure out what's what with. And I don't think we can overstate, underestimate the damage that COVID did to this company and Japan as a whole. Yeah. I don't know when you could say that the U.S. really started coming back. And, I, I mean, you could make an argument that it hasn't come back as like a live event um you know a live event situation like it was pre-covid but japan is still far behind those times and there's a lot of cultural differences as well that go along with that alcohol wasn't being served at sporting events it's a generally very reserved compared to us american sports fans you know uh, generally somewhat of a reserved culture there so you factor that in without having any alcohol without being able to cheer and make any noise. And I think Japan is still two years behind the U S and it's going to be this next year that pulls it out of that. You know what I mean? Um, there's new Japan as a company is still suffering financially. And that is obviously one of the issues. If they could throw millions and millions of dollars at Okada, I'm sure they would. But, well, are they going to have to from now on? Because here's how I can guarantee you. I don't think that they can, but perhaps I'm wrong. Well, here's what's going to have to maybe, and again, where I know we're pushing up against break right now. We see it with baseball, and I have a feeling that you, we've heard Otani and Senga and Yamamoto, names like that. I can see WWE or AEW welcoming in Okada in the same way, but it also brings some of the same issues for pro wrestling as you have right now with baseball in Japan, which is, can we afford to keep these guys? Do we keep the four of these guys, or do we just have to accept our fate? We'll talk more about that when we get back from break. Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Mike Sempervivi, Wrestling Observer Live, being joined by Filthy Tom Lawler. Don't know where Brian Alvarez is, but he'll be back on Monday on this show. He'll be back sooner than that with Dave Meltzer, surely talking about something on Wrestling Observer Radio, or at the very least on there with Vinny and Craig on the Brian and Vinny and Craig show. But Filthy, um... <sighs> We talked a little about this during break. We've talked about this stuff during the past. You know, New Japan, Japanese wrestling in general, we have seen them. Companies have issues trying to expand out to America. We've seen WWE try to get their tentacles into the country of Japan and not do very well with it. We see them starting to do that now 
but I'm a baseball fan, so I look at things like the Yamamoto sweepstakes that was happening, Otani a couple of years ago, Kodai Senga last year, you know, ended up with the Mets and everything. And it's like, I'm starting to wonder because I can feel when Okada is taken on by one of these companies, a lot of those types of comparisons be made to he's the biggest star amongst that league, those leagues over there in Japan. But then he comes here and he's, he's going to blow up bottom line. Is it possible? Is it, is it conceivable? Would they want to spend the money that they would need to spend in Japan for these companies many of which, several of which at least, are owned by big multi-million dollar conglomerates. Are they going to have any interest at all in wanting to spend the money that they would need to spend to keep guys here? Or do you look at it like baseball where we did what we could, we're not going over this much money, we're not going over this amount, and if you can make that, then God bless. Maybe we can get a little bit of the money like these minor league Bay where these Japanese baseball leagues do or teams do when they do lose somebody. And, and maybe they're, they're actually looking at that as opposed to trying to hold on to these folks. Unfortunately, I think it's going to be tough for the companies, whether it's a Bushi road, whether it's cyber fight, um, whoever it is to hold on to the biggest stars, if they want to leave, you know, as the world population grows, it also, the world itself becomes much smaller and you can reach more people easier now more than ever, especially with streaming deals across the globe. Okada could be a superstar in Japan and really never have to step foot in the country if done correctly. Uh, and I hope, I mean, selfishly, I hope that WWE, AEW, TNA, MLW, GCW, wherever Okada ends up, can do something along those lines and use his stardom to attract new fans to their product, to help grow the product, both you know, in the U.S. if he ends up here, domestically in Japan because I think that a rising tide raises all ships obviously I don't even know if that's the correct saying but let's go with it and I think Okada I don't want to say spreading his wings because it's not like he's blossoming uh, into a beautiful butterfly at the end of all of this but I think Okada stepping outside of New Japan you know is good for wrestling maybe not so much for New Japan, and it's going to take Certainly somebody not for Japanese wrestling fans who are first and foremost wrestling fan, you know, those type of wrestling fans. It's going to kill them. It's going to kill people who are look at their wrestling as Matt in the ring first, nonsense storyline second. It, it is going to sting those folks. I think it, yeah, it already it, has. It's going to take like a, a revolution behind the scenes, sort of in the way where Nash and Hall started getting these big contracts from WCW, right? I think it's going to take, obviously, one person to break through that ceiling, that glass ceiling. And if Okada isn't the one that could do it, I don't know who is. It's going to be really interesting to see what happens with New Japan this year. Obviously, they have so many young guys from Yu Yu Omura, Shooters, Umino's kind of established right now, but still, you know, you obviously you got a lot more building to do with him considering you're, you're thinking about a 20 year career out of that kid. Ren Narita, you have, you know, Hinare, you Gene have. Gene Blast. Oh, Yoda Suji, that terrible Gene Blast name, all these dopey <laughs> nicknames for these kids. But, you know, we're seeing some other guys starting to come up as well as probably a new influx of foreign talent that we may not have seen before. We've already seen a little of that with Nick Nemeth and, and now with uh, with Matt Riddle coming in. So there's probably going to be a lot of change over that way. So it is going to be a, again, it's going to be a really fascinating year for New Japan and it's probably going to be one that is as rough for them 
as it was for the the start of the the Three Musketeers. I mean, honestly, it, it's been a long time since they were looking at such a daunting year, but here we are with it. Now we've spent a lot of time talking about Okada in New Japan. One of his possible landing locations, obviously WWE, and it really it, it really it only comes down to WWE and AEW. I mean, there's nothing that Anthem could possibly offer anyway. <laughs> I mean, other than living in Canada, which which again, I from a tax implications purposes and all that stuff, like Florida seems to be much much better than living in Ontario. Uh, so you know he's going to end up joining either WWE or AEW. But SmackDown is tonight. Live on Fox from the State Farm Arena in Atlanta. A Royal Rumble Universal Championship contract signing between Roman Reigns, Randy Orton, L.A. Knight, and A.J. Styles. Hey, for those fans who are are exclusively fans of New Japan, just think one day Kazuchika Okada could be in a championship contract signing on SmackDown. This is mean, I know, I'm sorry. Also announced uh, today on social media, Randy Orton and Solo Sokoa has been added to the show. U.S. champion Logan Paul makes an appearance on the Kevin Owens show. I am hoping that there are going to be uh, gimmick attorneys uh, to be available for that segment. Hopefully that Kevin Owens can knock one of them out. WWE Women's Tag Team Championship, Caden Carter and Katana Chance defend against Alba Fire and Isla Dawn. The LWO battles the Legato World Order as Carlito, Joaquin Wilde, Cruz del Toro face off against Santos Escobar, Angel, and Umberto. And Butch, who is still Butch for right now, and Tyler Bate will face off against Pretty Deadly. So, Tom, are you excited for tonight? This is your show, right? Yeah, now that you've read off the the lineup, I kind of am excited. I like seeing Tyler Bate and Pete Dunn, almost Pete Dunn, back together. It was a fun little team. I like what they're doing in the main event. I think right now in Royal Rumble season, the more the merrier. Really, we all know that belt is staying on Roman Reigns. But the more intrigue you can add around it, I think the better off. And they've done so with having three challengers for the big dog upcoming. And then, of course, how could I not be excited for what's going to be the standout on the show. Are we going to see a 100% successful keg stand, Mike? Are we going to see it as Katana Chance, Caden Carter, take on Alba Fire? Have you seen one yet? Have you seen one yet? Well, I haven't had the pleasure since I cover primarily SmackDown. Mm -hmm. I haven't had the pleasure to see them in action as many times as you have, my friend. I will believe it when I see it. And I'm not happy about this because if it came to wacky tag teams, I would take Alba Fire and Isla Dawn for, for whatever reason. They have, have, have entertained me more than Caden and Katana. Uh, I, I'll be honest. I don't, you know, Kaylee Ray, I would love to see go back to NXT. I mean, I guess keep her Alba Fire, but I would love to see her kind of just repackaged on her own and rethought up again. I think there's a lot they're leaving on the table with her as a singles wrestler, but they got her, they got her with Isla Dawn and, and that I guess could be of, of all the matches on here. I, I would assume uh, this is going to be of the four, probably the, uh, the fourth hottest match. I hate to say that. I hate to say it. I think Butch and Tyler Bate against Pretty Deadly. That'll be more entertaining. The six man, I guarantee you the six man will be because I have a feeling, I don't think they're going to wait until Mania time. I I have a feeling on TV, they're going to break out that dive. Was it Joaquin that did the dive in NXT? I have a feeling they're going to be breaking that one out. The former DJ Zima Ion. Zima Ion. Who once teamed with The Mac, who was a, (laughs) portly rotund fellow and a mcdonald's singlet and a ronald mcdonald wig did 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 he ever feud as dj zima ion with robbie e while he was in tna impact uh, perhaps with the bromans that's a you know what a tna impact success story of those gentlemen leaving tna and refinding themselves and, and becoming what they are in nxt although robert stone i think the uh, jury is still out on 
I, uh, I'm not sure about that team with Von Wagner still. Although I do like the idea. I do like the idea of Von Wagner uh, in the mix with Jakara Jackson, Lash Legend, Oro Mensa, Noam Dar, and everybody else in, uh, in, in the group there. Okada? <laughs> like, honestly, if, if Okada comes to WWE, right, and let's say that that's where he's going to be, because you can do this – granted you would be tipping because the way the contract goes and his last match being in Japan on February 24th. I mean, you could have him debut at mania. Would you bring him in then? Or do you wait? Because to me, you can either debut him the night after on raw, which is, would make a lot of sense. You could wait and debut him later, but you could also, if you're willing to do this, have him show up and be the dagger through the heart of Gunther for that intercontinental title. Of those three scenarios, what do you, what would you do in this? What I think is going to happen is if he signs, if he signs with WWE, how many other W's I threw in there? WWE. <laughs> I think that they promote it as him coming in to sign the contract like he's a giant free agent like you mentioned i think you play it up kind of in the vein of mvp if you remember back in the day i do you say okada is coming in he's coming in to sign this contract then you run a big angle with okada in a suit at wrestlemania and you're off to the races I tell you i still like the uh the idea if he signs an AEW with how much love that, that Tony Khan has for pop culture and shows that uh, are in the WBD library that Omar is coming from from The Wire. Okada's coming. And he just steps out. You hear the whistling going on in the background. And then you, you, you hear the, the change falling. And there you go. The Rainmaker. Which, by the way, how many trademarks do you have filed? And have any of them gone through Mike Dawkins? Zero. <laughs> zero that have gone through Dawkins or just zero trademarks whatsoever? Zero total. Okay, because I'm going to trademark the name Tom Lawler now and use it for wrestling purposes. Do you think it'll get me anywhere? I can confidently say no. <laughs> Maybe a job as a commentator or special oh, guest referee as Brian keeps trying to push for you. But <laughs> Speaking of Brian, we'll be... We'll be hoping for his return here as we go to break. Pray your hands together and pray that he comes back on Monday. I know I do. Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper Vivi, filthy Tom Lawler here with you to put a bow on this thing. Killer Mike Semper adventure today. Say what now? Killer Mike yes. Semper Vivi. Damn right. You're the, you're the LP to, to, to my Killer Mike. But not the, the LP. El Producto. That's yes, you're <laughs> more producto than Phantasmo, but uh, uh, <laughs> filthy. Um, again, a lot of talk about Okada today um, and all that sort of stuff, and that's been interesting and everything. But where where are you going to be here coming up here soon? Because I've noticed a couple of little flyers pop up, and I see a very punchable face in Timothy Thatcher, and I see another couple of uh, punchable faces in MLW. I'll tell you where I'm going to be, Mike. Killer Mike Semper Vivi. Tomorrow night, I'm going to be in Spokane, Washington, defending the relentless professional world heavyweight championship of wrestling against that very Timothy Thatcher. And then Matt Justice is going to get it next Saturday at the 2300 Arena at the MLW show. I'll tell you that much. Second gear crew ain't getting out of it ain't getting out of neutral. That sucker is ripe for the pickings right now. Matthew Justice ripe for the pickings. Okay, I know he's a psychopath. There's going to be pain involved in this. You can't go into a match with Matthew Justice without pain. But I see what's happening with the second gear crew. I see what's going on between Ole Manser and, and Effie right now. I see all that, the divisions being felt, the cracks in the armor there. His mind is going to be elsewhere, and that's a perfect time for you to take your fist and beat him in the face a couple times and take what little mind he has left and just and just beat it into the ground. 
That's a terrible way to end this thing. I needed wow. I needed David Von Erich to jump in and save me. Have a we'll great be back. weekend. Rusty Observer Live.